this article was written back in February. And I'm always late <laughs> trying to make stories. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I just lose track of time. But as of the, 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 the date that this article was written, and as of today, which is March 9th, 2024, the iPhone 16 isn't even out yet. But these people are saying, you should wait until next year's iPhone 17. And I'm not going to read the whole article because fortunately there are subheadings. So we can just go through. So first reason that you should wait until the iPhone 17. Under display face ID is the fact that there's a little dynamic island on your screen right now or notch. Does that bother you? Is it really a reason to hold off if you need a new phone this year, you know, or whether it's for the 16, the 15, or one of the previous models? Is that a reason to hold off until a year and a half from now to make your, your phone purchase? I'd say probably not. So, okay, great. Mac rumors for letting us know that that might happen. Again, there's, there's no guarantee that it's even going to happen. The iPhone 17 Pro is expected no guarantee. And even then, it's still the pro model. So if you're not in the pro in, into getting a pro level device, use my air quotes right there, then there's no reason to, to wait. So whatever. Larger standard devices. So uh, this year's iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max are expected to get bigger displays, the article says. Um but then it's also saying that the, I guess the regular iPhone 17s for next year are supposed to get bigger screens. So bigger pro models this year and then bigger regular models to bring, I guess, bring them up to the same size next year. If you want a bigger device, like an even bigger than what's already available because the, the pro max and the plus versions are already pretty, uh, pretty big, pretty, pretty big phones. So if you want something even bigger, then I guess wait for it. But that's not a reason to, I don't, yeah, my opinion, that's definitely not a reason to wait. If you need a new phone, get a new phone. If you want a new phone this year, get a new phone. Number three, 120 hertz pro motion. And I guess bringing with that always on display, I, for the life of me, still, still cannot understand how Apple says that either one of those features 120 hertz or always on are considered pro level features. Just can't. They aren't. I'm telling you now, they aren't. Now, when it comes to the LP or LTPO option or, or, or technology, you know, having the, the phone to be able to dynamically adjust, you know, from 120 down to 1 hertz. Okay, I could kind of see that, but at the same time, in Android land, there are plenty of devices that are able to bounce between 120 and down to 1 and aren't pro-level devices. My, the main one, in fact, the only one that I've seen that actually goes down to 1 hertz, which I know there are more, but the only one I've actually had in my possession was the OnePlus 11R. So I can imagine that the OnePlus 12 also scrolls down. So, because if you watch a lot of YouTubers, they'll, they'll say, oh, uh, these LTPO displays or LPTO, whatever it is, allows the phone to, to scale between 120 and 1. But all other phones that I've seen, I think the lowest might have either been 10 or 24. 24 for like my Galaxy right here. Um, but I think maybe 10 for something else. So 1 hertz, I'm sure really helps with battery life. And that's great. But again, not a pro level feature and always on displays. I think I bought my first phone that had an always on display 10 years ago. It was a Moto X. Yeah, Moto X. Uh, I think back in like 2013, maybe 2014, probably 13. No. Not a pro level feature, but good on Apple for, I guess, expecting to uh, being expected to bring that stuff down to their non pro devices. Wi-Fi 7. OK. Cool. Uh, cool. <laughs> Wi-Fi. I, I, I am comfortable saying this. Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi AC. More than good enough for what most people use. Now, I, you know, I know newer stuff can be better and can, can give a better experience for a lot for some people. But for most people, Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi AC, more than good enough. 
Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E. Like I, I, I get, I know there are added benefits to the newer technology. So I'm not saying that the phone shouldn't in- include it because it should. If it's available, it should include it. But for the consumer, should you wait to buy a phone that has it? No, absolutely not. And you can read the paragraph to see some of the benefits. And I guess I didn't emphasize that for reason three right here. If you want any of those, I guess either buy the, the pro phone that currently exists for the 120 hertz or the, and always on display, or come on over to Android. You'll find that without a problem <laughs> because they are not pro level features and better cameras. Cool. All right. I'm not, yeah, you can read the stuff you want. Better cameras. Every year it's like that. Better camera, better camera, better camera. And you know, like I want to come back up to this one, 120 hertz and always on display because mainly, and, and this is really where it's unfortunate that consumers just kind of get swept up and lost, I guess, in some of these meanings. And then even uh, when we, we, we qualify phones in terms of, you know, budget, mid-range and flagship, or ultra, you know, like there, there are different categories, different manufacturers call them different things. But like, yes, this is a Galaxy S24. And I know I'm in a little box, so it's probably hard to see. But the ultra version of that phone exists, meaning this is not Samsung's top of the line device. It is a flagship, so it is going to come with some things that, let's say, the Galaxy A series or the J series doesn't have. But the iPhone is the the base, the cheapest iPhone you can buy, not including the the SE, but the, 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 the cheapest iPhone for that particular year is a flagship device. And it should come with a lot of these things that Apple deems pro level features. So... The Galaxy S24, the 23, uh, I, I'm not going to go back in time to see how many phones uh, of the Galaxy or the Pixel or the Nexus or uh, my Zen phone, like how many years I'd have to go back to actually see when did phones stop coming with high refresh rates. And then even today, which non-flagship devices actually have high refresh rates as well. Same thing with always on displays. Not Samsung's best phone, but still has an always on display. In fact, do I have it? Yeah, I'm having it on right now. So I know I'm in my bottom corner, but if I just tap it, nope, anyway, didn't work because there we go. So yeah, always on display. Shows the time, fingerprint reader, battery, and if I have any notifications. Nothing pro about that. So if you want a new phone this year, don't listen to Mac rumors. Go buy a new phone. If you want some of these features and don't want the Pro, consider looking at Android. And that's another one of the things that I I know I emphasize when I'm making these videos is that, yes, just because Apple has deemed it something doesn't mean that it is. And the thing that you're looking for probably exists in Android land in a phone that was made five or six years ago up to, you know, the phones that that are currently available on the market. (laughs) So, yeah, whatever, Mac rumors. 